church, let's stand to our feet and let's worship the Lord. We serve a great God and Savior. He will love us worthy of all the praise, all the glory and the honor. Lord, we thank you this morning for all that you have done. For Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. And Father, we invite you into this sanctuary this morning, Father, to fill us with your love. Fill us with your power, Lord, in every song that is sung, in every word that is spoken. Lord, let it all be done to bring glory and honor to your name. And Lord, we give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. He is the Messiah, the Lord of all. Hallelujah to his name.
tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 30. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. What a privilege it is to come together and sit at the Lord's table. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in your precious name. Lord, we know that we were created in your image, Lord, for a purpose, to serve you with all of our heart, soul, and mind. But Lord, through temptation, sin had come into this world. And ever since that time, you had a perfect plan to bring redemption to the soul of mankind when you would shed your sinless blood on that cross of Calvary. And so, Lord, this morning, as we partake of this holy communion, Lord, let us remember as we take this bread and we hear the sound of this bread breaking and we remember, Lord, that your body was bruised and beaten and broken upon that cross to atone for the sins of this world. As we partake of this cup, as we understand the process that this juice is made as these grapes are crushed, and the juice begins to flow forth from the broken skin of these grapes. That we remember, Father, that your skin was broken when you was on that cross. And the blood began to pour from your body. And your blood washes away every sin. Lord, help us, Lord, to never take that grace for granted. But Lord, help us to live holy and acceptable before you. And to live for you all the days of our life till you call us home to spend eternity with you. And Lord, we thank you, Jesus. And we give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we take the bread together?
I believe in the Father, I believe in the Son, I believe in the Holy Ghost and all these things. Hello, I'm Daniel Watson, pastor of First Assembly of God in Howell, Oklahoma. We are a local church with a worldwide vision of reaching out to people with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. For the next few minutes, we want to reach out to you through the messages preached in this broadcast. As you watch this message, we pray that God will speak to your heart and that your life will be forever changed by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25, the Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. When mankind first sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, God made a promise to this wicked world that someday a holy child was going to be born. This child was going to be no ordinary child. But this child was going to have all power. This child was going to have all authority. This child that was going to be born was going to destroy the works of wickedness. This child was going to set the captives free. And this child would destroy once and for all the power of Satan and make a show of him openly. You see, this child that was going to be born was not like any other child. He was not going to be born like any other child. But this child was going to have a heavenly father, not an earthly father. This child was going to be born of a virgin. He would be conceived of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why this child was going to be called the Son of God. And so this morning I want to preach to you a message. And I'm calling this message, uh, let's call His name Jesus. Amen. Call His name Jesus. You see, God knew from the very beginning that His only begotten Son, who was with Him in the beginning, would come to this earth, robed in flesh, to dwell among His people, to be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of this world. The Apostle John tells us about the deity of God clothed in the Son, Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus was on the mission from the throne room in heaven. He came to this earth to fulfill the will of the Father. He came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. 
he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. God revealed to mankind in the Old Testament through the prophets of the Old Testament of Jesus Christ. And the prophet Isaiah wrote about the coming of the birth of Jesus Christ. And the prophecy was foretold that Jesus would be a child that was like no other, that Jesus would be born of a virgin. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel Emmanuel simply means God with us. That means God above, the all-powerful God, the creator of the universe, the redeemer of mankind, became Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus came to this earth as the Son of God, robed in flesh, fully God and fully man at the same time. And after the death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension of Jesus into heaven, the great God above, who is also Emmanuel, God with us, sent to the this church, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is God who dwells within us. I believe, as the song says, I believe in the Father. I believe in the Son. I believe in the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. I believe in the supernatural power of Jesus Christ. I believe that in Christ Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, according to Colossians 2, 9. You see, He was a child who was going to have a birth like no other. And His name would be called Jesus because He was going to save His people from their sins. You see, the Bible declares the deity that this precious holy child would possess at His supernatural birth. The prophet Isaiah writes about the miraculous power that would be upon Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 through 7, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice, from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. In the New Testament, Jesus came to fulfill the will of the Father. He fulfilled every prophecy that was written concerning the coming of the Messiah. The great God above became Emmanuel, God with us. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He healed the sick. He restored sight to the blinded eyes. He healed the lame. He cleansed the leper. He calmed the storm. He opened the blinded eyes. He fed over 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. He even raised the dead and brought them back to life. But his mission was a mission that was not of his own. But it was a mission that he was sent from the Father in heaven who had sent him. You see, Jesus was known for teaching in the Jewish synagogues. The Bible tells us about a time in Nazareth when he was teaching in Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 20. The Bible says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled 
and your ears. You see, this child named Jesus was a child that was like no other. You see, He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He said before Abraham was, I am. You see, we serve a God who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. You see, it is not by might nor by power, but it is by His Spirit. Amen. You see, Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. You and I were lost and undone. We were lost without a Savior, but Jesus came to this world. He humbled Himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. And it is through His death and resurrection that you and I have life. Through His brokenness, we have been made whole. Through His arrest and through His execution, we have been set free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Yes, the Bible says the thief came to steal, kill, and to destroy. Satan was out to try to destroy our life. He was out to try to destroy the creation that God had made. But thank God Jesus came. And He said, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. He came to set the captives free. He came to restore life to those who are dead in their sin. He came to turn lives around. He came to set them free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. You see, we look throughout the Word of God and we see who this child named Jesus is. We see Him in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where He is the one who crushes the head of the serpent, who is the arch enemy of humankind, the devil. We see Him in the book of Exodus chapter 12 as the Lamb that was provided to deliver God's people out of bondage. We see Him in Leviticus 14 where He is the sacrifice alive and clean. We see Him in the book of Numbers where He has stained the plague of death. He is the high priest who is standing in between the living and the dead. We see Him in the book of Deuteronomy 4 verse 24 where He is the consuming fire. We see Him in Psalm 61 verse 2 where He is the rock that is higher than I am. In the Song of Solomon 2 verse 1 He is the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. In the song of Solomon 5.16, He is the altogether lovely one. In Isaiah 9 verse 6, He is wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 11 verse 10, He is the root of Jesse that would stand for an ensign to the people. His rest would be glorious, and the Gentiles would also seek Him. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, He is the one who bore our iniquities and he bore our sin. In the book of Hosea 2 verse 15, he is the door of hope and the valley of your trouble. In Zechariah 13 and 1, he is a fountain that is open for the house of David for sin and for uncleanness. In Malachi 4 verse 2, he is the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. You see, in the New Testament, deity puts on flesh and we see Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 2 verse 6 as the governor that would rule over the people of God. In Mark 1.24, He is the Holy One of God. In Luke 1.69, He is the horn of my salvation. In Luke 1.78, He is the day spring from on high. In John 1 and 1, He is the Word of God. In John 1.14, He is the Word of God who became flesh and dwelt among us. In John 1.29, He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. In John 1.34 He is the Son of God. In John 1.41 He is the Messiah, which being interpreted is the Christ. In John 6.35 He is the bread of life who Amen. came down from heaven to feed a hungry humanity. In John 8 verse 12 He is the light of the whole wide world. In John 10.14 He is the Good Shepherd. In John 15 and 5 He is the living vine. In Acts 3.15 he is the Prince of Life. In Acts 10, 36, He is Lord of all. In 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7, He is my Passover. In Ephesians 1, 22, He is the head of the church. In Ephesians 2, 20, He is the chief cornerstone. In 2 Timothy 4, verse 
verse 8, he is the righteous judge. In Titus 2, verse 13, he is the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews 8, verse 6, he is the mediator of a better covenant. In Hebrews 12, verse 2, he is the author and finisher of our faith. In Revelation 1 and 8, he is Alpha and he is Omega. He is the beginning and the ending, which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty. In Revelation 1, 17 and 18, he said, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And he said, Behold, I am alive forevermore. He holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's never going to change. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. But he is as close as the mention of his name. Hallelujah. In Revelation 5, verse 5, He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Root of David. In Revelation 15 and 3, He is Lord God Almighty and the King of saints. In Revelation 22, verse 20, He is our soon coming King. Jesus Christ is coming soon. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. There is no God like unto our God. There is no other substitute. There is no other Savior. There is only only one Lord, and we shall love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. There is no other way to salvation. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no salvation in any other name. No other name under heaven given among men whereby we can be saved. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, there is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. There is one God and Father of all who is above all and in you all. You see, when we come to Jesus Christ and when we confess Him as Lord and Savior of our life, not only do we seek for His forgiveness, but we must seek to be like Him. We must be obedient to Him by living according to His Word. Amen. You see, what I'm trying to do this morning is tell you who Jesus is. Who was that baby born in Bethlehem? They called his name Jesus. You see, the first time that he came to this world, he was born as a baby, born in the manger in the little town of Bethlehem. The first time that he rode into the city of Jerusalem, he came to town riding on the back of a donkey without any fanfare, without any music. But the second time that He comes to this earth, He is coming back not as a little baby, but He is coming back to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. The second time He comes back to earth, He is coming back with the sound of the trumpet of God. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord. Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. He is the King of kings. He is Amen. the Lord of lords. He is Jesus Christ. He is the King of the Jews. He is the King of Israel. He is the King of righteousness. He is the King of the ages. He is the King of heaven. He is the King of glory. You see, He is enduringly strong. He is eternally sincere. He is eternally steadfast. He is immortally graceful. He is imperially powerful. He is impartially merciful. You know who He is. He is Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. You see, He is God's Son. He is the center Savior. He is the centerpiece of civilization. He is the miracle of the age. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He guards and He guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He discharges debtors. He forgives the sinners. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. He beautifies the meek. He is the key of knowledge. He is the wellspring of wisdom. He is the doorway of deliverance. He is the path way of peace. He is the roadway of righteousness. Amen. He is the highway of holiness. He is the gateway of glory. He is the master of the mighty. Amen. He is the captain of the conquerors. Amen. He is the head of the heroes. He is the leader of the legislators. Amen. He is the overseer of the overcomers. You see, His name is Jesus Amen. Christ, the King of Kings. Amen. You see, His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. 
His goodness is limitless. Yeah. His mercy is everlasting. His yeah. love never changes. Amen. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and His burden is light. Amen. You see, I'm trying to describe Him to you today if I could, but He is indescribable. He is incomprehensible. The heavens cannot contain Him. Men cannot explain Him. You can't get Him off your mind. You can't get Him off your hands. You cannot outlive Him. And you cannot live without Him. Amen. You see, the Pharisees tried to stop Him, but they found out that they could not stop Him. Herod could not kill Him. Death could not handle Him. And the grave could not hold Him. That's who He is. He is the merciful Savior. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. You see, He had no predecessor. He'll have no successor. There was no one before Him. And there will be nobody after Him. And you cannot impeach Him. And He's not going to resign. For His is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah to His name. Hallelujah to His name. You see, He is coming soon. And when He comes again, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that He's my Savior. I'm glad that He's my Redeemer. I'm glad that He's my Provider. I'm glad that He's my Sanctifier. He's my Healer. He's my Deliverer. He's my Baptizer. He's my Strength. He's my Joy. He's my Happiness. He's my peace. He's my everything. Hallelujah. There's just something powerful about the name of Jesus. If you look throughout the Word of God, we read these words over and over. In my name. In His name. In Jesus' name. You see, the devils in hell are powerless because of the name of Jesus. Demons are cast down in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Healing occurs in the name yeah. of Jesus. Salvation comes because of the name of Jesus. Yeah. We are baptized in the authority of Jesus' name. But it is when you and I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that it is proved time and time again of bringing incredible results in victory. Amen. See, the Bible tells us in John 14, verse 13 to 14, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. In John 16, verse 23 through 24, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, He will give it to Amen. you. Hitherto ye have asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Yeah. See, whenever you're going through a difficult time in life, call on the name of Jesus. In the middle of the storms of life, just call on the name of Jesus. Amen. If you do not feel well in your body, and you need a miracle in your life. Just call out to the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, when you're going through the challenges and difficulties of everyday life. And you just don't feel like praying. And you start to feel as if no one cares. Just call on the name of Jesus Christ. Because when you call on Jesus' name, your circumstances change. When you call out to the name of Jesus, demons fear and tremble. When you cry out to Jesus, pain will go away. When you call out to the name of Jesus of Jesus. You can be delivered. You can be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you can have one word in your vocabulary, if you can have one name on your mind, it should be the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ, who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we could ask for. Thank you. You see, there is power in His name. There is hope in His name. There is authority in His name. There is life and healing and victory in His name. Yeah. Do you need a miracle this morning? Are you going through a trial? Are you going through a testing? Do you need extra help from God? I challenge you. I dare you. Call on the name of Jesus Christ. Because when you call on Jesus' name, your situation will change. You see, Satan hates it. He hates it when you use the name of Jesus. 
Because when you call on the name of Jesus, you were saying in, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 44, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. When you call on the name of Jesus, you were saying Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you call on the name of Jesus, you were saying Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. When you call on the name of Jesus, you were saying 2 Corinthians Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. I am troubled on every side, yet not distressed. I am perplexed, but not in despair. I am persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I want to tell you this morning, there is still power in the name of Jesus Christ. There is healing in the name of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 53, 5, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And by the stripes, we are healed. We must call on that name that is above every name. Make known His deeds among the people. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is the Lamb. He is the Lion. He is the Ancient of Days. He is the Living Word of God manifested in the flesh. You see the angels cry, Holy, Holy, it's the Lord God Almighty. Some people call Him Yahweh, Jehovah, but to those of us who have been redeemed by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. He is the Savior. He is the Master. He is the Redeemer. He is our all in all. He is the greatest, greatest revelation ever seen because He is Jesus Christ, our God and King. I tell you what let's do. Let's call His name Jesus. Let's call His name Jesus. Hallelujah to His name. Can we stand across the sanctuary? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we want to bless your name. We want to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. We want to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name that I know. No other name that is more holy. No other name that can bring healing. No other name that can bring life. No other name that is the source of our strength and the strength of our life. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Can we come around this front and let's bless his name. Let's lift up our hands to him and bless his name. Bless his name forevermore. Hallelujah. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you for watching today. If we have reached you, we would like to hear from you. You can visit us online at howag.com or you can write to us at First Assembly of God, P.O. Box 97, 
Howe, Oklahoma, 74940. We invite you to worship with us at First Assembly of God, Sunday morning Sunday school at 930, morning worship at 1040, Sunday evenings at 6, and Wednesday evenings at 7. We also invite you to subscribe to our online YouTube channel or visit our Facebook page. We hope that you can join us again soon for another service from First Assembly of God in Howe, Oklahoma.